Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial where we're going to dive into the uh, specific tools and resources that I use in my real estate business uh, every single day. And we're going to continue with Podio in this video. And we've gotten a lot of great feedback, a lot of good questions from the previous videos on Podio. And I know it's been quite some time since we released a new one. So um, we're going to get things really rolling here with some awesome uh, Podio videos. And we're going to kick that off right now, today. We're gonna to talk about project management within Podio, and specifically rehab project management. So in the real, uh, the world of real estate investing, a lot of us are flippers, right? We flip houses, we rehab houses, and the process of determining the scope of your project, estimating the budget, and then tracking that project as you move forward can be very difficult and very daunting for real estate investors. Podio, if used correctly, can make this a lot easier and it can really help you out to understand what your project consists of and feel good every day that you're tracking your project toward completion. So I'm gonna give an introduction to the project management uh, setup that I have in Podio here. Um, again, it's very specific to real estate, so it's not going to be your base camp, your Asana style. This is a, a way for Podio to track the day-to-day -day tangible things that are done to a house or a property. Uh, one thing before we dive in, this isn't just for rehabbers, okay? So for those of you with rental properties only, you're gonna rehab some properties too, probably, right? Um, whether it's right when you purchase a property or down the line, uh, maybe you're adding an addition, um, you're completely renovating an apartment. All of those things are projects that should be tracked to completion. So this applies not only to rehabbers, but also to buy and hold investors. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm in the projects workspace here, um, and I'm gonna go to projects. Projects is um, very simple data goes in here. So we're looking at um, anything, any major rehab, any major renovation would go in here. So if we take a look at a sample project I have here, it's gonna be related to the deal. So you'll recall that we have a deals app, and those are all the properties that we purchase, okay? so. Um, you have the opportunity to relate it to a deal, okay? Um, a brief overview of the scope, potentially a start and finish of the project, the status. Um, and this is all at a high level, right? Uh, we're gonna really dig down into the weeds when we go into the deliverables. Contingency, this is a good one that I really, really love. So um, we're gonna talk about budgeting in a second. And we, in our business, we use a bottom up budgeting approach. What bottom up means is that we start in the weeds. Um, give me every single task that constitutes a project, give me the cost of that, and then I want to, um, I want to sum that up at the top, at the top level, okay? And so with that in mind, we give the project as a whole a contingency. So when we give a budget for, uh, say, putting on a new roof, and then it, um, putting a new front door in, all of those items will have a baseline budget. And the project contingency will force me to add a dollar amount so that I can account for unforeseen issues that come up. Because if you haven't done a rehab yet and you're thinking about getting into it, uh, shocker, uh, your budgets are gonna be wrong, fact. Uh, there's nothing uh, that could be more true. Your budgets will be wrong. You need some kind of contingency. Sometimes they're wrong in the right way, meaning that uh, you you over budget for something and you come in under, that's fine. But more often than not, it's the other way around. So having a contingency really helps. And I'll show you how that all works as we go into the deliverables. Uh, the tracking we can set here, who the owner is. Um, and then these here are calculations and we're not gonna do anything here. We can't input any data but they are calculations based on the deliverables. I'm gonna show you how those, all, um, how those all work. Okay, so let's click out of here. That is a project. The deliverables and the projects are very closely related. Uh, put simply, every single deliverable must have a related project. So when you go to create a deliverable, the first thing you're gonna to have to do is add a project. I only have one existing right now, so I'm gonna click 122 Buffalo Rehab. You add the deliverable name, um, new drywall, and then you go through the rest of the process of, of setting that up. Um, now, one thing that I'll point out here is we use a lot of calculations. Um, you enter a lot of data and we calculate a lot of data. So one thing that's calculated is, um, we'll save this, and then we'll go look at it. 
um, one thing that is calculated is the project deliverable. The title of it is calculated, okay? So that's a very simple calculation if we go and look at what this is. It's take the project name and add the deliverable name. Now there's a very specific reason why we do that. Um, in the case where we have multiple projects, we would want to see um, what project we're talking about in the deliverable. Okay, I'm gonna bounce over to a different workspace uh, quickly to show you why this matters, okay? So this is my other workspace. Um, basically, we have this calculation because if we didn't, if we look at the calendar here, where I have multiple projects going on, if this right here just said drywall all new walls, I wouldn't know what I'm drywalling, right? So I add that calculation to tell me I'm doing that at 264 Union. All right, great, got it. 37 Hunt, make and install the wood countertop. Okay, I got it. If I only had make and install the wood countertop, I wouldn't know what the heck I'm doing. I could obviously click through my projects here and it'll tell me what's going on, but this helps me at a holistic level when I'm looking at the calendar, see everything and um, what it all means, okay? All right, so let's bounce back to our sample. And we're just gonna talk through a few more things. We're just getting started here. There's a lot that goes into this project management piece. There's gonna be a lot of videos on it. So um, don't worry if I didn't cover everything, it's because there's a lot to cover and we'll do it, we'll do it soon, okay? So let's go into the deliverables again. And I'm just gonna show you the other fields we have. So the project to have, the deliverable, the work period, the status, okay, so we're gonna manage this, um, each task as we get into the project as far as in progress, on hold, or complete. We'll use a card view to do that, to move things through the pipeline. Uh, progress, zero to 100%. And owner, honestly, we don't use this too much yet. We're a little bit of a smaller, smaller company, but that you can do. You can put an overview here, just some notes on what the task is, for example. Uh, if you're gonna install some tile, Maybe you can talk about what pattern of tile that is. Maybe it's a square pattern, maybe it's a diamond pattern, whatever. Budgets are a, an awesome piece. I'm gonna talk about that in a future video. Um, we'll talk about that later. Budget consumption, again, we'll talk about that later. Um, this is where it starts getting cool and we start estimating costs. So um, we're gonna estimate, and we're gonna talk about material quantity and labor quantity and other costs. So, th so the way we estimate rehabs, there's three main costs that go into every single deliverable. There's a material cost, there's the labor cost, and then there's another field for other costs. Some other thing that's maybe not easily captured with material or labor, okay? So as you're inputting into your deliverable, you say the material quantity, what is the material quantity per unit? And we calculate the material cost. We don't enter that, that calculates. So obviously if I put two here, uh, material cost is gonna go up to 260, okay? Very simple calculation. Um, labor is internal. Uh, we're gonna talk about that later. Okay, let's, let's stick with um, <laughs> the other stuff here. We're getting into the labor section here. Here you can pick a contractor if you want to track who's doing the work. Um, again, if it's not you who's doing it, that might be somebody else. Okay, so you can put them in there. Labor quantity, okay, so this is something where maybe somebody's gonna spend a full work day, eight hours, they're charging by the hour, they're $50 per hour, that's $400 in labor, all right? Cool, other costs, maybe there's $50 worth of miscellaneous material we're gonna buy, maybe, I don't know. Okay, that's $530 total for this task. That is the subtotal. And then remember I talked about the contingency. Back at the project level, I said, I want every single task on this project, as I budget it, I wanna add a 10% for contingency. Okay, so here's that field. There's that 10%, 53 bucks. And then those add up to my baseline budget of 583, all right? So this task has a budget of $583. I don't even know what it is, it's final plumbing, okay? That's arbitrary for now. But the idea is that you have a, um, a table or you have a list of tasks for each project, right? Okay, it's a list of tasks for each project and you have their, all of their data in here, material unit, material quantity, their cost, labor cost, other cost, 
the contingency is calculated, the baseline budget is calculated. And the coolest thing about that is that this goes up to the high level of the project. So if I go back to my project, here's the budget. All that is is a summation of all of those tasks that are related to that project. All right. And as I work through the project and things change, you saw that variance column. Uh, we'll track the variance of the project. How close am I to my budget? How far am I skewing from that? So um, this is really pretty awesome. So if I go into modify, you'll see some of these calculations. Uh, baseline budget is just a sum. All these are very simple. Just go and grab from those things that are related. Okay. So at high level, that's how it works. The deliverables roll up to the projects, okay? And we manage the deliverables um, on a day-to-day -day basis with, within Podio here. One thing I'll point out, and then we'll, we'll end this video and, and we'll have certainly some follow-ups, is the materials. This is one of my favorite parts about Podio and the power that it has. So uh, when we do flips, we like to get to a point where we know the finishes that we're gonna put in any house. We know the paint colors, we know the flooring, we know the granite countertops. We like to get to a point where we're, we're kind of standardized and we can really then know what to expect from a cost perspective and from a reception from the market perspective, okay? So as we move through our projects, we really like to track materials. Now we haven't had a good way to do that until we started using Podio, so let me show you. Let's take something like um, the bathroom faucet. Here's a task, okay, here's a scope item, all right? As we're planning this rehab, we need to install a new bathroom faucet, simple enough task, okay? Let's scroll down and see what's going on here. So right now you see I have a material material quantity of one, um, 250 times one is $250. Now I have this material field, and what this is for is to tell me what is the exact material that I'm gonna use here. So for something like this scope item, something like a faucet, something like a floor, maybe a toilet, maybe a cabinet, something like that, it makes sense to store materials that you've used in the past and track within your projects those that you use again. So if I click material, this is related to that material field, it's gonna bring up all of my materials and I can start typing um, based on a tag potentially or maybe I know the brand of uh, maybe I have a Moen I think I do yeah there it is cool a Moen Oxby brush nickel faucet all right that is gold to me because now as I one it's good for budgeting because I know the price of that product I've used it before two I know what the reception is from the market I've used it before again and, and three, when I look back through my old projects, I'm gonna have a record of the things I've installed in places. And maybe it's a rental unit and you find that you install a kitchen faucet and two years later you're having issues with it, it's not working well. You can go back to the project and say, what was the brand of that faucet? Where did I buy it from? Either maybe I'm not gonna buy it again or maybe you need to look up an owner's manual, something like that. So if we look at the material, we can store a ton of data in here, okay? Who made it, who sold it, um, a link to the item, a picture of it, all that good stuff, all right? This is the true power of Podio. If you can have a record of all this stuff, just think about all the data you're gonna have about your properties, your projects, and as we all know, it's, a, it's the age of data, right? With data, you can make really empowered decisions. All right, so I'm gonna end it there uh, because that was my favorite part, um, but on the next few videos, I'm gonna go into some of the fields that I skipped here, and then we're also gonna talk about this really cool free Podio extension that allows you to edit uh, your Podio items as if they were in a spreadsheet, okay? So we're all really used to using Excel and Google Sheets. There's an extension for free that you can edit your Podio items the same way that you do it in your spreadsheets, okay? So definitely watch out for that one. That's something that's really changed my life and, and made things a lot easier lately. Okay. Until then, feel free to check out all the free resources available at IncomeDicks.com, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks.